Hey guys, today we are going to be talking about how I manage a team of engineers. So here I have them. These are terrible photos. If you're new here, I'm Liz and I usually just talk about um, random things I'm working on, classes I'm taking, a bunch of nerd things. Um, but today we're talking about management. Uh, so I have a team of three engineers that uh, I work with and here they are. This looks super creepy and they all, they know that this is a thing. So like they have permit, they, ha they have given me permission to like take notes in our meetings and stuff. Like they know that I have a creepy stalker spreadsheet situation going on here in Notion. So I like to use Notion for a variety of different things. The team tracking is one thing that I love to use it for. So you can kind of see right here, I have three people that um, are working for me here. So we have Nathan, Connor, and Courtney. Now, Nathan is the most experienced. He's been here about a year or so. He's like my go-to <laughs> estimator here. Uh, Connor started kind of later, and then Courtney uh, recently started like two weeks ago. Um, so kind of wide ver a range. I like to put um, the job description titles um, and then track a few other things. So as my team grows, I can just add more. Now, I don't know how many people I can handle because three right now is a lot. So um, I'm just gonna go over some basics of like how I manage and um, the literature out there, like management books is mainly where I've gotten all this information from. It's not just, and then, you know, obviously experience as well. But uh, just for reference, I am 24 and I believe Nathan just turned 23 or 24. <laughs> they're all young, okay? They're like straight out of college. Connor's like 22, I think Courtney's like 22. Um, so basically the first step is that I like to track, right? So I have pictures and their descriptions here. Um, now, first one, I have Nathan, so he's been with me the longest. So I always put like the name, the role, start date, um, and then where I found them. So Nathan, I actually found it at Career Fair. He's actually friends with my brother, um, which is super weird. And then I have like kind of goals and mid-year reviews, year-end reviews, mid-year reviews. So Nathan's doing fantastic. So there's nothing wrong with <laughs> sharing a little bit of that. Um, Connor, I haven't actually done a mid-year review yet because he's new, started in like April. This is a terrible photo of him. I make fun of him every time. It's the one on his LinkedIn. I just... Uh, so like I said, I have the role, start date, image, and then found by, um, he actually was working here. And then I have, I'm going to have a mid-year review, but I have some pictures of him out in the field here. So I, here's some pictures of Connor. <laughs> Shout out to Connor. He's the best. And then I have Courtney as well. And I have her role, start date, and then where I found her, um, and then we already did our like expectations discussion um, when f she first started, but the kind of difference between them. So Nathan is actually an electrical engineer. Um, that's what he got his degree in. Connor is a civil engineer and Courtney is a mechanical engineer. So I have every discipline, which is awesome. So they all are unique in their own ways. And Nathan works out of the Austin office. Connor works with me and then Courtney works with me kind of on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, it's kind of hard when you're virtually managing, but what I like to do is um, I read in deep work that autonomy is huge. So shout out to Cal Newport Deep Work. Autonomy is huge. And when I read that book, I thought, okay, if you give somebody autonomy after you've trained them, obviously, they should work better. Right, so basically they have full autonomy on their schedules. All I request is that they do the time blocking. So I have a link and I'll link it down below um, of time blocking. And so every morning I look and I just see what they're working on based on the time blocking situation. And then I go, okay, Courtney's working on this, Connor's working on this, and then we do check-ins throughout the day basically. And that is a very low key managing, like I don't have enough time to micromanage people. So um, if they abuse the system, they abuse the system. But for the most part, I trust these people, so, and they work really hard. So I have no problem giving them that autonomy. Now, the next thing as far as management goes is training. So training is huge. I spent like my, you have to almost be in a mentality that like 
it's your job to train these people and to make these people as best as possible. So it's no longer, the focus isn't on me. The focus isn't how fast I learn and how quickly I can get things done. No, every time I do a task, I think about how could I have broken that task up into smaller chunks and given it to Courtney and given it to Connor or Nathan, you know? So uh, the more I do, the less of an opportunity they have to do that thing. Um, so that has been like the biggest challenge is cause I am just a complete control freak when it comes to doing work. I like to do it fast, but it's fine if I have to do it slower and then let somebody else do like a chunk of the work because that's the only way to learn. So I've been trying to work on the control freakness <laughs> of myself, um, but so far they're doing fantastic. And the next thing after training, there is just knowing them on a personal level. Like I went out to go visit Nathan in Austin, Texas <laughs> recently. Like what manager goes out and like hangs out with their employee and for, with them for the weekend? Like who would wanna hang out with their manager? That, I mean like Nathan and I are best friends. So it's like, it's natural. And, and we got there because I put that friendship as a priority. And that was kind of um, shown in a few different books so some really good management books if you're looking to get into management or you're looking to start a team or how it however it it is for you is i read the happiness advantage and it talked about vertical couples i wonder if it's on here the vertical couple your relationship with your boss is the single most important social bond you can cultivate at work there it is in the literature guys so that is the most, that is like the craziest thing to me when I read that. I was like, oh my gosh, I've been prioritizing things wrong. So then it says the most destructive thing you can do is ignore news that people share with you instead of follow up with questions. So like, basically you need to cultivate this relationship. Um, it's like a fundamental relationship. So that kind of got me the idea of, okay, I need to be friends, right? Like it's all about like, yeah, you're you're their boss, but you're their coach. You're their, you're their friend. You have a huge influence on their life because I had a hard time thinking that for myself because I'm like, who would care what I think? But when you get that power dynamic, like when you care what your boss thinks, even though I think that I'm like, no big deal. And I'm like, who cares what I think? I do have an impact on how they view themselves. So I have to acknowledge that impact. And so I read... The Making of a Manager, I believe, was my first book. And this is the freaking gospel of management books, guys. This is it. Look no further. I use Julia Zhao. I use her questions every midpoint, every mid-year review, and every final review. Because they are so freaking good. What does great look work look like? What is making you satisfied? How are you feeling as a whole? Just like she has fantastic questions. And guess what? I went to her author, she did like an author thing, author talk, and I went to there, see, so yeah, I took a snip of it. And how do you inspire your team? Advice for confidence? Um, what action should we be taking to improve our relationship with our manager? Like, I'm big on the, the relationship with your manager, it's huge on me. Do you believe that your manager knows what matters to you? Like what you think you're good at? How can I make my manager aware of those things? Do you know what your manager cares about? Like she had some fantastic advice. Um, so I that was a fantastic book. So that is, I mean, that that is what I use. And I'll show you a, a, an example review. I'm just gonna go over one with Courtney's cause it's like nothing personal. Cause we just started to get to know each other. That one's really good. And then another, really good one well humor seriously was good why humor is a weapon in business and life but the other management one uh was radical candor it was orange here it is this was phenomenal um and there was all about where was it uh okay there should never be any surprises in a formal performance review that was the best advice i got from that book Switching genders, now that I have a female on my team, I really have to think, okay, is she really being like aggressive or is it, am I just like putting that on her because she's a female and females aren't supposed to be aggressive and like socially, like that has been socially engraved into me. So I need, so she talked about switching genders was a good idea um, and stuff like that. So thoroughly enjoyed Radical Candor as well. 
She also mentioned building the bond with your, with your, um, your teammates or people who are working with you or for you or however you want to say it. So for example, for Courtney's expectations review, basically, um, we talked about all kinds of things. Um, I asked her all kinds of questions. How do you want to be recognized for great work? That is a fantastic question. I stole right out of making of a manager, like spontaneous informal recognition. That's what she wants. Six to one ratio. You're supposed to do six compliments per every one critique. But, and like, what can I do to make you more successful, right? Like those are the types of questions that you should ask and be discussing with your manager if, it, if you have a good freaking manager. <laughs> so like, all I want to be is like the best coach that I can be for these people. And I want them to be my friends too. Like I can tell Nathan, like, because we're so close, if he's doing a shitty job. Like, it, it, there's just, it, people think that, oh, you can't be friends with your manager. That's freaking bullshit. You can, and you should. Like, end of line. End of story. <laughs> like, you can be, it makes it maybe a little more awkward when you have to give them hard advice. But personally, I find it much easier to give feedback to somebody like Nathan, who I'm best friends with, versus somebody I don't know very well. Um, because I don't respect them enough because I, I, I have mad respect for Nathan. So it, I don't know, like make your own judgments, but based on literature, it is a very good thing to have a strong relationship with your manager. So um, that is kind of how I go about managing. I take it very seriously and um, I hope you guys are managers out there and you guys get a little piece of advice from here um, through books literature, time blocking, giving your employees a, a, a few like autonomy, what you wish you had basically is, is the goal. So, um, I hope you guys, I hope this helped you guys and I will see you guys next time.